Hello and welcome. It gives Carl and I great pleasure to be here and to be sharing this recital program with you all. We are in the majestic church of Saint-Simon, nestled in the beautiful Acadian Peninsula here in northern New Brunswick. Our recital program is called Why Think About Tomorrow? In these times that have been very challenging for us collectively as a society, we would like to take a moment to give gratitude, to enjoy being in this beautiful space, and to make music and enjoy the magic of the acoustic, and to share this program with you all, the audiences at Debut Atlantic.
set in our program is two arias from Handel's Rodolinda. Handel wrote this wonderful opera for the famed Italian diva Francesca Cuzzoni. Now Cuzzoni joined Handel in 1723 in London because she was going to become a member of his ensemble for operas, the Royal Academy of Music. Now when Francesca Cuzzoni was en route to London, this put a media frenzy in place. Now we have to really imagine the scene that was possible at the time. Opera stars such as Francesca Cuzzoni were so famed. They were a little bit like hockey stars or pop stars today. And they commanded huge fees for their performances. Now, when Francesca Cuzzoni finally arrived, she had a wonderful first meeting with Handel, and Carl can share a little bit about that because it's quite a well-known story. Yes, because it's quite famous, because <laughs> Cuzzoni, who arrived in London in glory, realized when she met Handel that one of the arias had been written for someone else before her, and she absolutely refused to even look at it. So Handel very famously said, you think you're a little devil, but I'm the king of all devils and I will show you what I mean. And he took her and held her <laughs> over the window from the second floor over the street until she agreed. And of course she agreed and the aria was a huge success. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it was, you know, it was a real meeting of diva and divo in a lot of ways yes, with Mr. And I, Handel. <laughs> I did not have to do this with Christina this time. <laughs> not this time, but I've had my moments. Um, and so, you know, that's just sort of to sort of set the mood of the kind of relationship that Handel had with this famous diva. Eva. And I would say too, it's kind of fun. I'm looking forward to this happening one day myself, but um, Francesca Cuzzoni had raucous fans. You know, they, uh, that they would turn up at her operas and they were always willing to give a good shout for what she was up to and also be a little bit devious towards, you know, rivaling sopranos and rivaling opera stars. So we're sort of looking at a time um, when opera was heralded as this magnificent thing. And uh, Francesca Cuzzoni and Mr. Handel had a long relationship of success. Now, when you listen to the two arias, you're going to hear that there's an element of spontaneity and improvisation. You're gonna hear this in the vocal line and also probably a little bit in some of the bass lines and the orchestral version that Carl will be performing today. And I bring this up because the idea of adaptability, improvisation, and being in the moment is very much the theme that links many of the elements in this recital as we're going to be exploring folk elements, jazz elements, and also those of contemporary music. And now this gives Carl an opportunity to share with us a little bit about his method in arranging the Acadian folk songs that we're going to perform next. These three folk songs arrangements were written in 2017 as a set 
for a program Christina and I were touring at the time. Since then, I have found such pleasure in revisiting the folk song repertoire of my ancestors that these three songs have become part of a much larger set of 12 folk songs arrangements to be published next year. These three songs are very different from one another. The first one represents a very festive situation, jumpy and full of joy. The second one has a darker side to it as it has been recorded to be one of the hymns that Acadians were singing on the beaches, waiting to be deported. The last one is the old story of a boy who wants to marry a girl, and oh surprise, the father responds with a resounding no. <laughs> so here are L'Escawette, Tupas, and Wintrala.
The next work on our program is Penelope, music and text by Cecilia Livingston. Throughout the ages, the mythical figure of Penelope has been a representation of fidelity and of what it is to be waiting for something or someone. These are the first words of this song. What is it to be waiting? What is it to be waiting for you? This question, so simple and yet so deep, is very well reflected by the minimalist intimate introduction at the piano, we then follow Penelope's thinking process driven by the evolution of the motives in the piano score, which have elements of improvisation, even a jazz feeling to it. Uh, but at the end, we hear this question again, what is it to be waiting? Is there an answer to such a question? <laughs> I think that what makes this concept of waiting so inherently connected to human nature is that it is rooted in hope, and we all need hope to live. Thank you. 
Penelope's message of hope is certainly the perfect segue into Oscar Peterson's tender love ballad, Why Think About Tomorrow. Now this special song was written by Oscar Peterson in both the text and the lyrics, which makes it a wonderful way to communicate the essence of being in the present. I feel very fortunate that this song was shared with me by Oscar's family his wife, Kelly, and his daughter, Celine, very kindly shared this music with me. And when I saw it, I was so excited to perform it. And I'm really thrilled to be sharing the piece with all of you. Now, when I think about Oscar Peterson, there is certainly the legend that he was. But also, I would like to remind everyone, a proud partner, a proud father, an active community member, and I think these are all values that we can all relate to and that resonate with all of us. I hope you all enjoy this message of staying in the present, enjoying what love has to offer for us all. Why think about tomorrow?